Prior to the July 10, 2017 <coughs> reorganizational meeting, Ms. Beth spoke with Elizabeth Ewing, the VSBA attorney, and asked Mrs. Ewing the following question. Does the chairman have the authority to appoint the members of the JRTC board, or should the board vote to appoint the members? Ms. Ewing stated that unless there is a written bylaw or policy that states otherwise, the board should continue with whatever practice it had used in the past. At the July 10, 2017 reorganizational meeting, the chairman appointed the JRTC board members. At that time, two board members requested this practice to be reconsidered and that a vote be taken. However, the chairman ruled that he had the authority to appoint the members of the JRTC board. A board member requested that we contact our attorney, not the BSBA attorney, for a second opinion, uh, and the board agreed with this request. The next day, Mrs. Best contacted our attorney. Uh, Mrs. Best also contacted Mr. Carlos Clinton, who is a licensed parliamentarian who provides parliamentary procedure training to all school board clerks through the VSBA to rule on our parliamentary procedures during that meeting. Several of you may have met him at some VSBA uh, conference we attended. Mr. Clinton stated that the board should keep with their house rules unless there is a written policy that states otherwise. He noted that if the chairman has historically appointed these board members, he or she should continue to do so to a new policy or bylaws established. Upon further review of our parliamentary process, uh, there, I'd like to read the following paragraph about parliamentary procedure. Any ruling of the chair can be challenged, but such appeals must be made immediately after the ruling. If debate has progressed, the challenge is not in order. Although Robert's Rules of Orders allow debate under certain circumstances, the practice of some groups to allow no debate. Robert's Rules calls a challenge to the chair and appeal from the chair's decision. When a member wishes to appeal from the decision of the chair, the member rises as soon as the decision is made, even if another person has the floor or without waiting to be recognized with the chair. The person says, Mr. Chairman, I appeal the decision of the chair. The chair should state clearly the question at issue and if necessary the reasons for the decision then state the question this way. The appeal of the decision of the chair shall be sustained. If two members move and a seconder appeal the decision of the chair, the effect is to take the final decision on the matter from the chair invested in the meeting. Such a motion is in order when another speaker has the floor, but it must be made at the time of the chair's ruling. As noted above, if any debate or business has intervened, it is too late to challenge the chair's decision. The motion must be second, is not amendable, but can be reconsidered. A majority or tie vote sustains the decision of the chair on the principle that the chair's decision stands until reversed by the majority of the meeting. If the presiding officer is a member of the meeting, he or she can vote to create a tie and thus sustain the ruling. It should be noted that members have no right to criticize the ruling of the chair unless they appeal it. So, based on Allegheny County's public school's previous process of appointing JRTC board members the ch and the chairman's ruling, and there was no appeal of the chairman's ruling, the decision made at the July 10, 2017 meeting regarding the appointments cannot be challenged at this point. Then we also conferred with Ms. Stacy Haney, our school board attorney. And uh, I think I'll send this out to everybody. Pass this down. This is her ruling. You're welcome. I'll go ahead and read that. This will confirm our telephone conversation today regarding the appointment of board members to serve on the regional JRTC board. You explained that it has been the long-standing practice of your board that the chairman appoint four school board members to serve on the JRTC board each year. The law in Virginia regarding the authority of school board members, including the board chair, is that school board members shall have no organization or duties except such as those assigned to them by the school board as a whole. You also have a school board policy that is consistent with the law. See policy BBAA. The authority of the school board chairman is also set forth in policy which has been approved by the board as a whole. Your policy BCB states that the duties of the chairman are to preside at all meetings of the school board to perform such other duties as may be prescribed by law or by action of the school board and assign all legal documents approved by the school board. Therefore, unless there is some other policy, bylaw, or official action of the school board granting the chairman additional authority, the chairman does not have the authority to do anything else other than what is listed in policy BCB. I will also note that your policy B 
D.C. State Special Committees may be appointed by the Chairman or created by the School Board Action. I believe that this is the v VSBA pol model policy, and I think it's common. While the JRTC Board is not a committee, and this policy does not apply to appointments to the JRTC Board, I suspect that this policy and the underlying concept that the Chairman can appoint Board members is the basis for your Board's practice of allowing the Chairman to appoint JRTC Board members. Moving forward, the appointment of JRTC Board members to be technically correct, I think the Board has two options. The School Board can vote on the appointments each year, or whatever the duration of the appointment is, or the school board can give the chairman by policy, by law, resolution, motion, et cetera, to make the appointments. That came from our turn. Now, so as, as the chief administrator for the division, what I see here is two opposing opinions. So as you can see, there are different attorney opinions on how this should be handled. Given the absence of written board meeting operating procedures, this is what I would recommend to the board. I would recommend that the chairman appoint a three board committee to develop board meeting operating procedures for board governance. I would also recommend that the board meeting operating procedures be reviewed and approved by the board annually. I'd be more than happy to any, any answer, answer any questions relating to the parliamentary procedures that we used that day. Well, we were in line with past practice, and we're in line for rep today. So at the next meeting, uh, if the board so chooses, then we can appoint a committee to the three to look into this and see which way the board chooses to go. And that would be my recommendation. So we'll go from there and what the committee would come out with. But our price practice has been what we've always done. So Mr. Chairman, I've got a comment around that that's yes. appropriate. So I think there was some confusion probably. I know my first year on the board, we did have a go-through about who was going to be on different committees. Um, but in the past, and if you can go back to past meeting minutes, we've had, and I think Mr. Persinger was chair at one point in time, that he appointed people to committees, so, and including JRTC. So I think maybe there was some confusion. I agree. I think it's a great idea that we go back and we appoint a committee to take a look at that and decide what we want to do going forward. That'll be easy to do. We'll do that the next meeting. We'll appoint three people to that. Even though it has been a past practice, if we want to change how we do things, it's fine. But I will say this. <clears throat> Last year, when we took a vote, the whole board got attacked. This year, we didn't take a vote. Only I got attacked. And I don't mind somebody uh, <clears throat> complaining to me about it or accusing me of it, but it's better than the whole board being attacked. But I think a policy change would clarify that for future uh, meetings. So I think we can make that happen at the next meeting. 